This channel and all its videos are non-profit and for the sole objectives of educational and teaching purposes only. We hope everyone enjoy and learn from them. Hello everyone, Teacher Lim here. So sorry, it's been a long time since I made a video. So um, I would really like to dedicate this video to my classes this year. Uh, of course, this year is the school year of 2020. Uh, I would like to dedicate it to my uh, science classes, um, Tree Joy and Tree Care, of course, from my own primary school. And how could I, of course, forget my own uh, form class and science class, Tree Honesty uh, 2020. So, of course, uh, my video here is dedicated to my these three classes and, of course, to all the teachers, the parents and students out there as well. Now, what I'll be covering today, right, is actually under the topic of diversity of non-living things, uh, which is under, which is about materials and the properties of materials. So these are the four main things I'll be covering today. Examples of items and objects made of each, made of each uh, material. How materials are actually made or where they are from. Uh, the different properties of materials. I'll just cover some um, as... Uh, required by the primary three syllabus or curriculum and of course how do we test these properties of uh, the materials so uh, of course I, I did uh, much research and gathering of um, ideas and content and resources first before I made this video and of course credits uh, as usual goes out to Google, Google Images uh, I got some information from Wikipedia and of course from the publisher Marshall Cavendish uh, my pals are here, textbook, primary textbook, diversity. So credits go to all these uh, sources. Now, uh, let's move straight into plastics first. Now, on the left, you can see, right, these are actually some uh, objects made of reusable plastic. All right, so of course, these are actually quite harmful if you use them too often. Uh, of course, there are different kinds of plastic here. And uh, there's one here, which is, uh, if I'm not wrong, should be styrofoam. So too much use of all these uh, disposable or single-use plastic objects are actually harmful to the environment because uh, we are throwing and discarding them away and uh, there's a lot of carbon footprint. Now all, all here on the right side, these are more of a usable kind of plastic. So you can see uh, pails, containers, Tupperware, your lunch boxes or even uh, your spade or some of your toys. So these are made of um, reusable plastic. Now, how plastic is made, many students have asked me this um, and it's not exactly covered uh, in school, so I decided to cover this here. Now, uh, first we have to drill or, or, or uh, get oil from the ground and then the oil is finally transported and uh, transported, of course, to the factories or the industries where the crude oil, uh, they do some processing to it and then they create different kinds of plastics that they want by using uh, the crude oil that they have uh, managed to, to, to drill or to get from the from underground. Now, I like this point here. It says that uh, if there's too much plastic, it really harms uh, the oceans, the seas, uh, the environment in general because uh, if too much plastic is being produced and used, uh, they eventually they have to become waste and be thrown away so uh, if we throw them and dump them into the, 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 the seas and the land fields, it will be harmful to the, to the environment. So over here, it says here we, we are not supposed to sit back and let manufacturers produce too much plastic and let them go unchecked. So if you don't really get this part, I hope you do though, uh, this is a very uh, much easier summary or much... Uh, uh, I would say short summary of how the plastics are, are made or, or created. So first you get the oil, then you go through some process in the industries and factories. Then eventually you produce or they produce, the manufacturers produce what kind of plastic they want for what kind of purposes and uses. Now move on to metals, right? Okay, of course, these are some of the uh, items or objects made of metals. You have pots and pans here. You have the canned food, uh, sorry, the cans. They are used to store your food or, or store your canned drinks. Of course, we have here, we have uh, nuts and bolts and screws made of metal. 
Of course here, uh, ships and boats, they're also made of metal and your vehicles like cars and airplanes definitely use a lot of metal for them to work and uh, function properly to keep us safe, to transport us uh, and keep us safe. And people are also, or students are also wondering uh, or have, have questioned me and asked me how uh, is metal uh, formed or how do we get metal. So here you can see there's a, 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 a iron ore mine, if I'm not wrong. So you actually have to dig way underground uh, to, to mine for oil, if, to mine for metal, pardon me there, to mine for metal. And you can see this, if I'm not wrong, this should be the original surface of the earth. So you have to dig or mine quite deep underground before you can get all the metal that you need. And too much of such mining is actually very, very detrimental or harmful to the environment. So you can see here, this is a very nice picture I found online of how uh, metal is formed or, or created. So you have iron ore, the raw form of iron. It goes through the processing. Okay, So it's basically being heated up. Uh, or melted down and then eventually it goes through the process where of course again you decide like like uh, plastic what kind of uh, metal you want to make you can either make uh, metal rods or, or metal wire rings for that metal so these are the end products now there's uh, uh, something interesting here you need to use coal because if I'm not wrong coal uh, is the fuel used to, to keep these uh, furnaces or this uh, heating equipment uh, running so a lot of coal, coal coal is needed uh, to melt down and to, to I would say, uh, burn down uh, this uh, iron ore so that it can become the form that you want to make it into the metal products or metal objects or items that you need. So of course, uh, next we move on to wood. So some very common um, items or furniture made of wood. We have tables, desks, uh, or even your stationery like pencils, bookshelves, drawers, so on and so forth. All these are made of wood. And I would like to bring your attention here. So this is a piece of laminated wood actually. So you can see this is a very good example of how items and objects are made of not just one material, even though they may look like they're made of one material, but they're made of uh, a few materials instead. So the outer layer is plastic. So the inner area, the inner layers, pardon me there, the inner layers are made of wood. So uh, you can see there's the same or similar example here. So the plastic surface or down here is uh, acrylic. Uh, over this example here is melamine. Uh, these are plastic uh, materials, so they actually protect the wood. But I, I, I believe you will want uh, the wood finishing uh, so that the, 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 the lamination looks good. You can see here, over here it looks good, but you can't see the layer of plastic. And yet, the layer of plastic actually protects the wood underneath, uh, keep it waterproof so and or scratch proof. So that's one or two ways plastic actually protect the wood material that's underneath. So now where wood comes from, of course, we have to chop down or cut down trees. Uh, this is an example here, but uh, of course here in this picture, you can see if we cut down too much trees, uh, if we go unchecked or if we do not control ourselves, too much uh, trees being chopped or cut down will harm the environment. And this is uh, what we, know, we call it as a deforestation. So over here, uh, next we have paper. So some of these paper products you can see here for yourselves. Uh, paper from, uh, sorry, paper used to make uh, books or magazines or newspapers, uh, facial tissue, your toilet paper, all right, your, power, your, your paper towels, napkins, serviettes, so on and so forth. So all these products are made of paper. So where the, que the next question I think everybody will be thinking or asking is, where does paper come from, right? So uh, same thing, paper comes from the same source as wood, uh, trees. So like I mentioned before, we are not supposed to uh, chop down or cut down too many trees lest we harm the environment where we are eventually harming ourselves. Alright, so next uh, we move on to glass. So these are some uh, common items made of glass. You have windows, you have the windscreen or, or, or rear screen of the the vehicles and cars uh, made of glass so you have uh, bottles uh, jars glasses so on and so forth uh, I think uh, in secondary school you use this quite often these are test tubes so all these objects are made of glass so basically what you want uh, these objects uh, to be uh, the properties to have is to be able to see through and to be quite strong and durable in that sense so uh, 
many students also uh, have asked me this where do we get glass from or how is it formed so let's look at this picture here a very simple uh, idea the simplest idea i can give to you is you use sand you heat it up you process it eventually it turns into glass so of course you can see other materials here as well that's mixed together with the sand to eventually get the glass so over here is another picture or another diagram of uh, how uh, sand is being used over here heated up all right uh, processed to form pieces of glass so this is a very nice picture here I found through Google Images uh, of how factories or industries they make glass. Over here is uh, glass bottles specifically. And in case you're wondering what is sand which uh, is used to make glass. So this is a picture of sand which you can easily find uh, at the beaches or, or uh, coastal areas or even some parks and playgrounds. So next uh, we move on to rubber items. So some of these, uh, sorry, these are some of the items usually made of rubber. We have balloons, tires or wheels, gloves, erasers, so on and so forth. Alright, over here, right, there are actually two ways that we can uh, create or make or produce rubber. So the synthetic, synthetic simply means it's man-made. The man-made way of making rubber is actually to use uh, oil, which is the same way we use uh, oil to make plastic but now we use oil or petrochemicals to make uh, rubber uh, actually it uh, feels like plastic but it is plastic uh, made to look and feel like rubber so this is another picture of a factory or industry that uh, produces man-made rubber and over here this is the more natural form uh, or I would say the natural form of making rubber which is from rubber trees so you can see here a, a rubber tree plantation worker uh, hanging out or laying out the rubber uh, to dry so next we have ceramics of course over here you can see in front of you uh, ceramic pots uh, ceramic uh, plates ceramic cups so these are some products made of ceramics and the same as uh, rubber there are natural ways or I would say uh, men uh, I, okay, I wouldn't say natural ways, but they are made uh, by hand. So this is uh, how you make uh, ceramics from clay. And this is more of using machines, machines to make, uh, use clay to make ceramic products. So uh, actually ceramics, uh, pardon me there, is, uh, is, is man-made because it's made from clay. It's just whether you want to use um, humans or, or, or labor, manual labor uh, for people to make the ceramic products or you want to use machines to make the, and produce the ceramic products so uh, let's move on to fabrics now of course your clothes your shirts your dresses your pants uh, umbrella your your towels your soft toys all these are made from fabrics and there are two main uh, sources of fabrics they actually either come from uh, animals or they come from plants pardon me that these are just two ways there's actually three ways so if they are coming from animals it's usually from silkworms or, or sheep or lambs uh, if they are from plants so we have this cotton ball uh, we have flax we have bamboo plant and the hemp plant so this is the third way um, synthetic or man-made fibers or fabrics uh, they are actually made from a combination of uh, natural occurring a fabric from uh, trees or plants and they are mixed with oil or petrochemicals and two examples of uh, man-made or synthetic fabric I have here is polyester and nylon so there are actually three ways let me go back uh, of making um, fabrics one's from animals one is from plants and one is uh, man-made or synthetic materials which is actually a combination of plastic and plants Right now, uh, I, would, I would like to introduce everyone to this idea, uh, or maybe you already know this. Uh, so this is a very simple way of showing how an object or an item can be made of multiple uh, materials, like a plastic in this part of this uh, part of the bag, and a metal on the zip of the bag, and of course the most uh, parts of this bag should be made of fabrics. Alright, so this is a very simple example of how an object or an item, a, sing a single item can be made of multiple or 
a few uh, materials. Now, I would like to bring your attention to more interesting objects which I found online. So this is Kevlar. This is actually a body armor. So it actually protects uh, security forces or the police or other people uh, that requires protection on their jobs uh, from gunshots or even uh, knife or dagger attacks. So this is actually a combination of metal and fabrics. Right? This is actually a good example of how items are made of more than one material. So I have more coming. So this is Gore-Tex. Now it's pronounced as polytetrafluoroethylene, if I'm not wrong. Now it was invented back in 1969. Gore-Tex can repel liquid water, yet allow water vapor to pass through. So it allows you to, to perspire, all right? And uh, so you won't feel too hot. Uh, but yet it is designed to be lightweight, waterproof fabric for all weather use. So come rain or shine or uh, very, um, I would say, uh, difficult or, or uh, hazardous weather, I think this can still be used. So it is composed of stretch polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE for short, which is also more commonly known as the generic trademark of Teflon. So uh, this is an example of a Gore-Tex uh, shirt or raincoat. And if you have any uncles or brothers or fathers uh, who have served national service, this is very common, this is our Gore-Tex boots or whether you have aunts or aunties or, or sisters or, or female friends who serve in the NS as well, National Service uh, you can ask them about this, these are the Gore-Tex boots very famous and popular I would say uh, locally in Singapore Now, uh, some more examples of uh, how objects are made of uh, multiple or few materials so I mentioned this just now so this is the laminated floor or laminated flooring uh, from wood. So we have plastic at the top uh, and the, the inner lower layers are made of uh, wood. Even your computer or laptop um, is usually not just made of plastic. Uh, it can also be made uh, or comprised of other components made of uh, materials like glass or metal as well. So uh, it's very important to keep in mind that an object can be made of a few materials or multiple materials. So now I would like to move on and talk about creativity and innovation in materials. Now this is actually a waterproof sock so you can see right the socks is uh, flexible and I would say stretchable like socks and yet it is waterproof and can protect uh, and keep your feet and your legs dry and yet function like a pair of boots but it's actually socks. Right, I like I like to share this story uh, many times. I have this uh, friend who used to work with, uh, or I don't know if he's still working for mobile phones uh, companies. So metals are actually very expensive. So uh, they actually tend to use hard plastic instead of metals uh, for the phone. So it makes you think or feel that the phone is actually made of metal, but it's actually not. It's actually made of hard plastic. So it actually uh, strengthens and makes the phone very durable. So these are very creative and innovative ways of using materials if you ask me and of course we have a uh, bulletproof glass uh, it is very important in protecting uh, property or be it people uh, from bullets or attacks uh, some more innovation and creativity in uh, materials of course uh, body armor as i mentioned before kevlar even our own uh, singapore local notes if you look at it or you feel it and touch it uh, carefully it's actually made of a combination of paper and plastic which, it, we make, which makes it very durable and uh, waterproof if it's purely paper you can imagine right your your notes can tear easily or, or break easily and uh, you will not be able to use your money or your notes uh, anymore so combination of plastic and paper is definitely durable and um, improves the property or the material of the money notes of course we have stainless steel now metals are known to rust but of course uh, we all have come across or used uh, stainless steel uh, knives or forks and spoons before and by making it stainless right we are actually protecting ourselves and the, 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 the crockery or utensils are, are very durable and yet they do not rust so this is a dry fit material so most of us would have worn such clothes before uh, it keeps our body dry and yet it allows uh, 
sorry, I mean it, the, the, the bacteria will stay dry, yet it allows our, our wet or, or our sweaty body to perspire easily. So this is a very good uh, example of a fabrics, uh, creativity in fabrics for sports attire or sporting wear. Now, uh, how do we test each uh, property of a material, right? For example, uh, I like to talk about strength. Now, strength is the material's ability to be put without tearing or breaking. You can also call it durability. Now, this is a simple experiment. You can set up the poles, the pail, and then this is the material that you want to test. So, if it's a uh, cotton rope, usually you put uh, quite a few marbles and it will break. So, the number of marbles actually indicate how strong the material is. So, usually if you use a metal, rope or string i think it will be much stronger or durable so it will be able to hold more marbles before it eventually break so how many marbles it causes uh, the material to break actually is how strong the material is so you need to use standard size marbles if possible or you can use other materials or sorry other objects of uh, weight but of course they should be of a standard size so you can see here this is a uh, metal rope if i'm not wrong so you can see how durable and strong it is to be able to support the child and these are uh, wooden, I would say wooden steps and even ropes okay, ropes made of fabric so this is uh, why or how strength is very important in materials and objects so now, uh, ability to float or sink in water is another very important uh, property that's covered uh, in primary tree so uh, very simply, how do we test whether an object floats or sinks just put it in a container uh, the objects at the surface will be floating or the objects at the bottom will be sinking but this illustration is more of uh, I would think in the sea or in the ocean but we can easily use this uh, same idea, same experiment as well but of course we use a glass or plastic container to be able to see through it will be better to see which objects are floating or sinking at the bottom so uh, transparency right basically is about how much light a material allows uh, to pass through so we have three different categories here transparent objects are usually those that allow most light usually it's not all most light because some light will eventually get reflected away so uh, these are some objects or, or, or materials like plastic and glass now opaque uh, objects or materials they do not allow light to pass through all right you can see here you cannot see through these objects and uh, the third type is translucent. So they allow some light to pass, pass through. So frosted glass, frosted plastic, usually this allow uh, some light to pass through uh, instead of most light. So of course, a torchlight will be the best uh, to use to shine through them to see if the light uh, actually passes through the material. So these are ways you can test for transparency in objects and materials. Right, waterproof now. Now this is a very uh, excellent picture I found online uh, to test for waterproof of materials and objects. So now, what does it mean by waterproof? Waterproof uh, is the material's uh, ability to not absorb water. So you can see here there's uh, aluminum foil or metal here. There is rubber, there's uh, plastic and there is fabric or cloth here. So a very simple experiment is, of course the water is in the middle. A very simple experiment is you put the uh, material on top of the on the cup just like how it is done here and then you pour water on it now if the water seeps through right and is contained in the water it shows that this material is definitely not waterproof because it uh, has absorbed the water and allowed the water to flow through uh, into it if it's waterproof the water will just right uh, flow okay out of the uh, away from the cup and will be spilled onto the surface here or onto the table so this is a very good way of testing uh, the waterproof of materials all right uh, over here I have a picture of a coffee stain so this is a very good example of how the object or the material is not waterproof usually uh, if I'm not wrong this should be paper paper is usually not waterproof now this is a laminated uh, flooring not laminated wooden flooring so as I mentioned before uh, the flooring is although it's made of wood but it has a layer of plastic uh, over it so it the water is uh, flowing over it, it's not being absorbed, it doesn't seep through or flow through. So this is an example of waterproof material. And of course your glass and your cups, these are waterproof materials. Otherwise, uh, the, the water will just flow out and you, you will not be able to drink the water at all. 
All right, testing flexibility now. Now, flexibility is actually a material's ability to bend without uh, being spoiled or broken. So this is a very good example of how you can test the flexibility of uh, objects or materials. So I can have uh, two blocks here, or metal blocks or wooden blocks, uh, up to your preference. And then I can have the material or the object in the center. I can keep adding weights uh, onto this object. So how much it bends is actually uh, how flexible or bendable the object is. Now, flexibility uh, in terms of plastic rulers or plastic, they are definitely more, um, I would say, more flexible than metal. So over here, I have a metal ruler. So if you place weights like this, right, uh, usually you will be able to see how much the material bends. And definitely, in this example, a plastic ruler is definitely more flexible than a metal ruler. Now, uh, take note that a lot of students tend to mix this up with uh, testing of strength. No, this is more of uh, flexibility because you see how flexible the material is able to bend. But of course, if the, if the material breaks, it's not strong enough to hold, uh, then you can say that the strength of the material is not there. But yet, this uh, test is actually to test more of flexibility than strength. Right, so this is uh, another way you can use uh, your own hands to bend the material to test uh, the materials, how flexible they are. If you have to use more strength, it shows that they are more stiff than flexible. If you have to use less strength, then they, it definitely is more flexible than stiff. All right, so you have different objects here which you can try and test out on your own if you have the time and the materials to test. Alright, uh, I have come to the end of my video actually everyone, uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video, so please do stay safe and take care everyone. Uh, so this video was made on 19th of April, a Sunday, so uh, especially to all my students, uh, please take care, stay safe and if you can, mask up and as usual, if you did enjoy my video, I hope that uh, everyone can subscribe to my channel and like my videos where uh, if you do that more often you will be recommended and suggested to other viewers as well and everyone can learn and uh, be taught through my videos uh, and learn a lot more from my videos so that's all I have for everyone take care everyone and till my next video see you